Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm currently working on upgrading a larger project to have feature that it didn't have included in the board when it was originally made, like this P-channel switch that I did for external sensors. Right now I only have a light attached to it for demonstration purposes, but I will later power on the sensors that are connected to the board and you could see I have a test light connected to it that now triggered automatically when that board went out of sleep. Once the board finishes what it does then it will switch it off and power off all of the sensors that will be later connected to the board in order for it to save power. What this device is, is a P-channel MOSFET switch that uses a P-channel MOSFET, specifically the RF9540 that controls the output. So on the other side, I have positive and negative output with multiple terminals because I want to power multiple sensors. Here comes the incoming 12 volt power supply. And here we get a signal pin from the ESP32 that goes through a transistor to trigger the gate of the MOSFET and turn everything on and off. I did this on a perf board as a test bed to make sure that it works and it functioned correctly, but to plan and design the circuit and the actual PCB layout and routing of the wires, I used Altium Develop, which in fact is the sponsor of this video. If you build electronics, you know how complicated collaboration can get. Different tools, endless meetings, and version chaos that slows everyone down. Altium Develop changes that. It's a cloud platform built for real co-creation, bringing electrical, mechanical, software, and sourcing teams together in one shared space. Instead of jumping between disconnected tools, everyone works on the same data in real time. Designers can create schematics and PCBs, procurement teams can manage parts and pricing, and manufacturing can review designs before production, all in one place. Every change, comment, and decision stays in context, so no one's left guessing. You can track progress, manage requirements, and resolve issues before they become problems. No silos, no delays. Just clear, connected teamwork that keeps projects moving fast, where it's easy to bring the right people into the process whenever you need them. If you're ready to move from working together to working as one, check out Altium Develop at the link in the video description. For components, I used a 2N222 transistor just to have something that will react on the 3.3 volts coming in from the ESP32 that powers the larger board. And that is actually pulling the gate of the transistor low, otherwise it keeps it high through this uh, resistor here. I have two 10 kilo ohms resistor as a pull up resistors and one one kilo ohm resistor that is on the base of the transistor and the signal pin. Everything else is just uh, multiple outputs. I've separated the positive and the negative side so I can minimize the chances of them shorting out uh, when they're added in the enclosure and the power is routed on the pin here. So 12 volts and ground is connected here. And here we connect the signal wire from the pin on the ESP32 as well as a ground pin. So both of the grounds uh, are referenced and all of the voltage is actually referenced. There are not many components on the switch, but it does an excellent job for its purpose. Now let's go and build this thing. We can go into Altium Design and Develop so I can show you the circuit that I built. You can see here, this is the incoming uh, power supply. So 12 volts is coming in here and it goes through a pull-up resistor to the transistor as well as to the source of the MOSFET. Then the signal from the ESP32 comes on J2 through a 1K resistor on the base of the transistor and the emitter is connected to ground. So when this turns on, the ground will be connected to the gate of the MOSFET and that will turn it on because otherwise since we have a pull-up resistor here both of the gate and the source will be at 12 volts so the MOSFET uh, will be off the output from the drain is connected to four pins of the connectors that i have on the board and the other four are connected to ground there is also a 10K pull down resistor that is connected to the pin coming in from the ESP32. And this is just so we make sure that there is no floating voltage 
applied to that transistor when everything is off and when the pin from the ESP32 is actually low. Once that pin is pulled high, then it overcomes the resistor and then a larger current is applied to the base that turns on and connects the gate to ground, turning on the output. To start making the PCB, I'm gonna use a piece of this perf board that's used for prototyping. And I'm gonna start by adding the terminals onto it. These two are actually the same as this, but they have this slot at the end that you can slide them together and combine them into bigger terminals if you need to. So I'm gonna do that and combine them to make two pieces of four terminals and I'm gonna add the two on the opposite side based on the PCB layout that I did before. So these are a bit tight. And for soldering, I'm gonna use my PCB holder that I made in a previous video. You can check that out up here in the corner if you want to see that video. So one of the terminals is actually falling off, so I'll slightly widen it. And now it comes to the end here. Okay. That should be okay. Let's tighten it up. And we can now start soldering the pins. While you're watching me build the circuit and the PCB and the traces below it, I'm gonna ask you to check out my Patreon, which is down in the video description. If you're interested in projects like this, supporting me through Patreon is the best thing that you can do for me to be able to continue making educational videos and educational project and share it for free with the world. So I will be really thankful if you go in and check that out. Okay, so with the terminal soldered, next up is to add the MOSFET and I'm gonna add it here on the bottom so it aligns with this pin here because I'm gonna bend the leg here at the end to connect with the positive side. This will be the output and this other pin from the other side will actually connect to the positive supply. So I'm gonna use the MOSFET legs to secure it in place. Now it's not gonna fall off and we can apply solder. Okay, so with the MOSFET in place, I'm gonna add the transistor next, and I'm gonna add it so that the far pin here aligns with the ground here, like so. So I can bend that leg and make a connection to the ground. We're gonna have direct connection to the ground here, but this will be better for now. Now for the resistors, R1 and R3 are 10 kilo ohm resistors. And one of them will be connected here next to that ground that we connected. And the other side will be connected to the power port here. So something like this. And we can use the leads to bend them over so we can make the connections. So let's solder that in. And the other one will go like so, where one of the legs we need to solder to the transistor and the other one to the input. So I'm gonna bend this lid here. So this is going at the input and this is connected here to the transistor, so we can solder that like so. There is one more connection that we need to do. 
right here. So I'm going to use a piece of the resistor that I cut. This would have been better if I remember it on time, so I didn't cut it, but it should work as well. There's a bit of flex in the wire, so I'm going to push it like so. And that should be okay. Now, R2 is the one kilo ohm resistor. And this is what brings the signal to the base of the transistor, so it turns it on. And I'm gonna add it right here. So one of the legs will be soldered directly to the base of the transistor. And I can bend it like so to make the connection, and the other one will come on the input for the trigger signal. And lastly, we need to make sure that all of the terminals on one side and in the other are connected together, as well as the ground having it connected both ways, and also the incoming ground that needs to be connected with the Outgoing for that, I'm gonna use just a simple copper wire to make the connection. So, this is the trigger pin, and I'll have ground connected on both ends here. I'm gonna apply just a tiny bit of solder to the wire. Okay, so that should be enough. I can actually bend this all the way to here. And during testing, I realized that I had drain and source mixed up, so we need to reverse the connection. So this needs to go here, and this needs to go here. Hopefully, I'm not sure if I damaged the MOSFET by doing that, but we'll see. I need to swap them out now. And that is exactly why we do tests with our electronics. Now this is working, the main board is in sleep, so everything is powered off and I'll cover the light so it doesn't blind the camera. This is just for test. In a few seconds, this should now turn on and trigger the light via the pin here. So as you saw, now the pin is high and this is triggering the MOSFET, which is conducting and turning the light on. Instead of the light, I'm gonna have the sensors connected that will be on the main board. But with this circuit, we're gonna be saving quite a lot of power. Now you see that went off because the board did its thing and it went to sleep. It's gonna sleep for one minute and start the cycle again. Uh, this is just for testing purposes for now. In reality, this will sleep for about 10 minutes, do its work for about 20 seconds and repeat the cycle all the time. I'm gonna wait for a few more seconds just so you can see how the whole thing operates. When we get a high signal from the pin here, this turns on the transistor that in fact pulls the gate low of the MOSFET. And since this is a P-channel MOSFET, this is what is triggering the switch to, to power on. Otherwise, through that resistor there, it's being pulled high all the time and the 
MOSFET stays off so you see automatically it turned on. Now this board is just a prototype and for what it's worth it's done its purpose because I had a mistake in the circuit that would otherwise be costly if I went and ordered this online. I'm gonna actually now since I fixed the layout I'm gonna go ahead and order the boards from PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome partner that I have for a long time on the, my channel and I've ordered quite a lot of PCBs from them for my project and this will be no different because I will need multiple devices like this built and it takes quite a lot of time to build the layout on the PCB so I'll order them and maybe in a future video we can build the devices as they come. I'm gonna end the video right here. I hope that you liked it and uh, you learned how this operates and how it works. If you did like it then make sure to hit the like button below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss uh, any of the future videos that I publish. YouTube thinks that you're gonna like this video next and I'm gonna see you all in the next one. Cheers!